This is the Wonderfully Made Podcast, and I'm your host, Fifi Buchanan. On this show, I share personal experiences, narrate stories I've written to reveal truths about life and the human experience. I also share lifestyle improvement tips in bite-sized episodes, so you can listen during your commute, in the office, or in the comfort of your own home. My desire is that every time you listen, you are reminded that you are wonderfully made. So often we lean towards what we have been told is the responsible thing to do, which is plan for a rainy day, save for an emergency, and have a contingency plan. These things help brace our fall in troubled times. While it is good to be prepared for the worst of life, how much time do we truly spend preparing for the best? There are phrases like, don't get your hopes up, or I wouldn't hold my breath, to bring us back down to earth. But maybe some of us need to spend more time in the clouds. Maybe we need the opportunity to prepare for our blessings. You see, that's actually responsible too. If we believe what we pray for is to come, then we must prepare. Not only is it about preparation, I've noticed that allowing myself to imagine the good relaxes my mind and my heart, and it infuses my day with hope. Now, find a safe space, a comfortable place. This guided meditation is going to be your safe space to dream. No one is going to drag you back to their version of reality. You are safe. Let's begin. Take a moment to get comfortable whether you are seated or lying down, and take note of your body. Scanning from your feet and slowly moving up to your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs. Do you feel tension or pain or even areas of cold or heat? We're just observing. This time is completely judgment-free. Now, take note of your breath and if needed, begin to slow it down. Slowing down your breathing will help you slow down your heart rate and bring you into a more relaxed state. Let's explore. What are you currently hoping for? It might be something you rarely say out loud, but it's often on your mind. When you're honest, it's a pretty deep desire of your heart. Maybe little by little you have been doing the work, planning, preparing, but have never let yourself fully imagine what it would be like for that desire to be fulfilled. In what ways would it change your life? Would it bring new people into your life? Would you move to a new city? Would it cause you to change your vocation? Would it help bring more ease into your life and the people you love? Would it add to your peace or your happiness? Imagine tomorrow you wake up and that thing you prayed for has finally manifested. With this new blessing, what time do you wake up? Do you wake up naturally or with an alarm? Do you wake up early or late? There are no wrong answers here. How does your daily routine change? What do you drink? What do you eat? I want you to think of all the ways your daily life may shift if the best case scenario happens. If you finally get what your heart desires. Ask yourself, have I truly been moving in a way that shows I believe I am deserving and that it is coming? Have I truly allowed myself to admit fully that this is what I want to happen? And am I prepared to welcome in the good? From now on, let's commit to the idea that part of being prepared and responsible is looking out for and preparing for the best case scenario to be welcomed into our lives. 
that setting aside moments to dream is healthy. There was a time in graduate school where a test question tripped me up a little. I remember I did the entire problem and then went back and erased it and started all over again. And then I began to stare at it for so long that I felt like I didn't know anything at all. I was an anxious mess by the time I turned the exam in. I remember handing it to my professor and saying, I got nervous and forgot some of the essentials. Hopefully I still did okay. I remember the look on my professor's face, but he didn't, he just basically said, don't worry about it. Even if you didn't do well, we'll find a way to get you through this course. The outcome of the exam was so shocking to my professor that he emailed me right away after grading my paper. I had gotten an A minus. Some people like to say you manifest what you believe, but I think life is a little more nuanced than that. Even with my lack of self-confidence in that moment, I still got high marks on the exam. But what I also manifested was anxiety, and I felt very sick, not just up until the moment that I got the good news, but even after. It took a while for the anxiousness to leave my system, and it wasn't good for me even when my thoughts didn't change the outcome. They still caused a great shift within me. Our thoughts can create peace or steal it. I do not look back on that scenario and judge or shame myself. I look back with great compassion. Undergraduate school was a traumatizing mess, while graduate school allowed me to repeat the same lessons and win. It was hard, but it was a time of healing. Every step of the way, I started imagining things working out for me. I started looking beyond just getting across that graduation stage and into what my career might look like. I started looking at the ways my life might change for the better once I was well into my career and could build a professional reputation and bring in income. I started visualizing places I wanted to live, companies I might want to work, titles I might want to hold. Each little win built my confidence. Those wins also strengthened and steeled me for the tougher times as well. Life will never be without tough times, but I need you to know that giving yourself a chance to dream isn't proof that you're ignoring that. You deserve a chance to dream. Life without a chance to dream would become a life absent of faith and hope. If it's been a long time since you've allowed yourself to believe in the most positive outcomes, just take baby steps. For instance, look outside in nature. Look at how trees are completely barren and then springing with life just a few months later. Look at how birds and squirrels are out every day in search of food. Their instincts tell them there is something they need so they wake up and go for it without the thought of, will I get it? Will there be enough? They simply go seeking because it's in their nature to go after exactly what they need. Let us be like that, seekers, ones who searching with no time for letting doubt get in the way. Imagine the best case scenario doesn't automatically mean the scenario will come true, but it means you understand that you are a divine being and worthy and deserving of peaceful, prosperous, and happy thoughts. That we may not be able to control the outcome of our lives. The time between now and when a thing happens can either be wrought with worry and anxiety or overflowing with peace. Now, let's affirm. Taking time to imagine the best case scenario is a productive use of my day-to-day -day life. I use my powerful mind to create positive scenarios and opportunities that haven't even happened yet. Preparing for my blessings is how I demonstrate faith and good stewardship. 
I am an active participant in my life. I recognize the divine existence I have been blessed with, and I know I am worthy. I use my mind and my words to create an environment for healing and regeneration. The desires of my heart become closer to reality each time I dream. I look forward to the small wins that strengthen my resolve. I will never run out of possibilities. I am fortunate. I am prosperous. I am enterprising. I am constructive. I am hopeful. I am positive. And I am exactly who I need to be to create the life I desire most. As we close out this time of reflection, let's end it with a cleansing breath. Slowly breathe in, and now breathe out. Take your time coming back to the present moment. No matter what point you are in, in your day today, I want you to keep in mind the possibility of the best outcome 